and there were six guys who were part of this initial discussion. And we discussed, okay, somebody is making a bunch of money, right? Who is it? Started calling out of town. I think there were three bands that were $5,000. I called them on the phone and said, how did you do that? And they said, we asked. You for called them. them. Called them on the phone. Strangers. Strangers. That's fantastic. Oh, are you kidding me? Mark Maxwell, thanks for being here today. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. This is, you're my first interview as part of a video series that I've been dreaming of doing this project for several years now where, um, I interview various artists, musicians, people making a living as an artist, specifically pointed towards music, um, to illustrate all the different ways that you can make your path in life. I'm trying to avoid saying make a living because that conjures up a certain kind of mindset to me. And what I really want to say is that there's a, a, a life path of fulfillment, right? Sure. That you can you can have a life that is a Joseph Campbell. Well, you can follow your bliss. You can do that by being an artist, an entertainer, uh, being doing things that are music related. Uh, you can do that, and it doesn't. And there's not just two options. Right. So what I've seen a lot over the last decade of teaching is um, the young and old students or their parents. You know, for young people or older people who are coming to lessons, that there's this mindset of. I am either the starving artist or I am Taylor Swift. Right. And there's a whole, you know, there's a whole lot of middle ground in between. There's all these different ways that you can make, again, make your way, follow your bliss through um, being a creative person. And I've met so many people mm -hmm. who um, who are living that. And so then, you know, I got this idea, like, I want to interview all these people and use this as a way for other people to learn what those pathways look like. Sure. And and again, I'm trying to avoid using certain words like f this is for students because student sounds like somebody young and I meet people young and old all the time. I mean, you know, my husband Alan didn't start playing bass until he was 40 years old and then before you knew it he was involved in two or three different bands and there's and there's a lot of fulfillment, you know, in life that comes from that. So I couldn't think of anybody better mm. to start this conversation with well, and do you. this series than with you because you have so many different ways that you are making a fine living too, by sure. the way, right? You're not starving. You're not destitute. <laughs> um, you're, you're the total opposite of that, but you're also not, you know, Ed Sheeran. You're not a multimillionaire, like in the in all of the stereotypical roles that somebody would think you would have to be in in order to to have a successful, fulfilling life sure. as an artist. So, Juan, thank you for having me. You're welcome. You're a beautiful place here, by the way. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, I enjoy your friendship. Go ahead. Well, so I want to start out by you describing, and let's forget that COVID is happening at all, um, your jobs your activities in music, mm -hmm. okay? When COVID's not happening, what are all the ways that you um, make a living as an artist or, you know, just all the different things that you do? Yeah. I told my daughter uh, before she went to college, I said, uh, why don't you write down every music job there is in the world, right? That has to do with music, music therapy, right? Working at a a music agency that books mm. bands, right? Like a booking agent, working at a record company. Like there's all these things in life that revolve around music. And then number those. Yeah, yeah, being an artist, of course, is everybody wants to be an artist. Everybody does. Everybody and, thinks they want to be an artist. Yes, they do. Until, <laughs> yeah, and half of them get there and they go, oh no, this is what I thought it was right. going to be. But so <clears throat> I always tell everybody, I list out every job there is. I should probably do that sometime. And then just number them and the things that you'd like to be in your life. Yeah. Uh, I think it's an, uh, an, an, an important thing if you want to be in anything. If it's sports, list that list out of things. Right. You can work for a team. You can, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to be the basketball player on the team. On, you can work for a team. You can... There's so much to do in any kind of genre of life. Mm. So find your passion and then jump in. Um, my friend, 
drives uh, an Uber. So he'll go and get food and, and take it to different places. And so I asked him the other day, I said, man, this guy can sing and this guy can play, right? And if he sat here and had a guitar in his hand, he's really good. And he never does it. Hmm. And I'm like, man, in four hours, you can make the money you made in a week of 30, 40 hours of delivering this food. Um, I think the first thing to do is, a, is, at least in my opinion, is that you've got to put down your pride. If you want to be Ed Sheeran, then write a million songs and write great songs, right? That's, that's the push is, you know, if you're a writer, you're a writer and you write no matter what. And so writing and recording, writing and recording, writing and recording. But it, with my experience in life, I've done a lot of jobs. How do you specifically, as Mark Maxwell, make your right. life? Okay, so around? my life specifically is this. I work at a music store. Okay. You don't just work at a music store. I worked at a music store for a long time until one day I said, I have to own a music store. Fair. And then I bought a music store. Okay. Okay. Um, and just recently, uh, I sold half of my music store, which did me just fine. Okay. Right? So that's a big deal. I'm sorry I'm stopping this phone. Um, and in, in addition to that, then you also have yes. other. So hold on. And so I had the stores, which I've worked at stores and now own stores. Um, I was a worship leader at a church for a long time, right? So I worked at the church and did worship leading. I played in a cover band at the same time of working. So I have a band that's pretty successful as far as that goes. Um, so I've done lots of jobs that equal, hey... There could be worse things in my life. My dad always said, we well, could be digging a ditch right now. So you've got the cover band, we've got store ownership, which, I, I mean, started as working at a store, yes. then buying a store, then selling half that store. Sure. Um, and also being a worship leader, which you don't do anymore, but that was part of the mix for it a was. while. I, but it, just like with my, my favorite thing for me as a musician is to write a song. Right? So. Right. And we're going to come to that. I'm going to put a pen right. in that. Okay. Right? Because that's definitely part of who, who your path is now. I love to do it. And so that's something I love to do. Do I see the payoff with it? No. Do For me right now. Um, so, but if I keep chopping, there's a big gigantic tree called music in the front yard. <laughs> and I mean, that's it's right. a huge tree, right? And every day I walk out with this axe and I'm trying to get it to be a sharp axe and not such a dull axe. And... And I, and I hit the tree, and then I, I wear myself out on a little bit, and I come back in. And the next day, I go out and I chop down the tree, right? And so songwriting for me has been one of those huge trees that I'm not even totally, even halfway through. He's getting the bark off. Right. right now. <laughs> and and it's, it's amazing. I know one day it will fall, because all things I have planned with a plan have come to be, right? So I planned to buy a music store. I made a plan. I opened a music store with a plan, and it came to be, right? I'm a real thing of write it down. What's going to happen? That's Tell a me. powerful part of your story there. Oh, it, it totally the, is. The plan that was behind it. I want to speak you to speak specifically to that around the cover band, because you mentioned cover band. Yes. And a lot of times people hear that, and may, again, that conjures one kind of image in their mind. It's a bar band, and they're getting 100 bucks for a four-hour gig, or you know, they're barely making ends meet. But that's not your band, and in order to, uh, because people that will see this won't know you and know the story like I do, I'd like for you to speak then to some of the greatest moments, if we can cap capture them that way, of you, the band is called the Louisville Crashers. They're called the Crashers. The Crashers. The Crashers, but yes, I'm we're from a, Louisville. I'm to the old, we, yeah. the old name. It's the Crashers now. Um, talk about some of the greatest moments uh, that you've experienced the biggest opportunities, real, you know, the sexiest stuff that's happened with that band because I want people watching this to understand that, again, you can start a cover band playing other people's music and make a fine uh, living, right. right? Doing that or as a supplement to other things that you do, and that's exactly what you did. And it doesn't have to be some ragtag garage band thing. You guys had a really specific way that Goal. you approached this. Sure. 
And so, you know, talk we, about the way that you approach it and also speak to some of those greatest moments just to add legitimacy for the, again, those people that don't understand the right. opportunities that you've had. Okay, um, you're right. One of the guys in the band came to me and said, hey, you know, we want to start a band. Would you be interested in doing this? And I said, no, because I don't want to go out and play for 50 or 100 bucks anymore. So I said, if you guys want to have a discussion about it, and there were six guys who were part of this initial discussion, and we discussed, okay, somebody is making a bunch of money, right? Who is it? And so we found a few bands, not in our town, because the average band in our town was making $500 to $900 a night to play the gig, right? Hmm. So, and if it was a wedding, maybe you'd get $1,500, right? So that was the kind of the top money in our town. Well, started calling out of town. What's the most expensive band in Nashville? What's the most expensive band in Indy? What's the most expensive band anywhere around here? And I found, I think there were three bands that were $5,000. I called them on the phone and said, how did you do that? And they said, we asked. You called them. them. Called them on the phone. Strangers. Strangers. That's fantastic. Oh, are you kidding me? I am. When it gets down to a phone call, I don't care. I'll call anybody and just say, hey, your, your band's making $5,000 a night. Why? Okay, keep going. So That's here's, right. and, and what it was is that we undercovered this. One, they ask for it, right? So if, if, one, if you prepare yourself and you get ready and you make a good product, right? And you package up your bottle of ketchup, and as I call it, right? And you take it and you make a really pretty bottle like Heinz did, right? Because they sure. have a beautiful bottle. They have a beautiful label. And the ketchup's pretty good. Is there better ketchup? Yes, right? So are there better bands than us? Probably so. But we had this idea and this vision of how to, how to, on the front side of it, say no. So we built this website, put a killer picture on it, video, great song lists of which we didn't even know, right? Half the songs. But um, we decided that we were going to, we had a goal to be a $5,000 band. And so most bands in town were making $900 or $500 or what a $300, whatever they were getting paid. And we decided that we'd raise our price to $1,500 and no one had ever heard of us. And so we had this website. We sent it out to everybody in the music business in this town or, you know, 100 mile radius uh, who had a venue, who had um, the could book a band, anything, agents. We sent it to everybody. If you owned a venue that had weddings in it or a bar or anything, we just emailed and said, hey, check out our band, we'd love to play for you. Well, we got a lot of response. Well, how much are you? Well, we're $1,500. Oh, there's no way we could spend $1,500. And I'm like, okay, know your value. Know what you're worth. And you had to say no. I had to say no. And all of my guys in the band were so mad at me on the front end of this because I was saying no to things that they would have taken before. I love that part of your story because I think that's what made the difference for you it, guys, it did. right? It totally did. Because and all of a sudden we became a more highbrow thing. Well, why wouldn't they take the $1,200 we're offering them? Why wouldn't they take that? Because we feel like we're worth $1,500. And now can you, is it It's $6,500 okay for, okay. for us to play a gig. And now that's up, that's $6,500. We, we, we do a lot of 7500s, a lot of $10,000 events, a lot of $15,000 events, $20,000. I just want to reiterate that. Yes. That's $15,000 between six guys. Yes. Uh, plus, you, I know you count a seventh man in for you know, reinvestment, right? Um, it's a lot of money. There's a lot to say there about how you run the business, but $15,000 for a gig, right? And you guys got there over the span of how many years? In three and a half years, we reached $5,000 a night Okay. to be a band. I also had some other rules. I didn't want to ever move my own equipment, so we don't. We have a whole road crew that we pay. Um, I wanted to have a really great sound man because I think that's the most important thing when a band plays is to have the guy who actually does the faders to do that. There's a lot of rules that we made up. We can't drink on any gig until after the gig. If you want to drink, you drink afterwards. You don't go to your job and drink. You know what I'm saying? You just don't do right. that. It's not something you show up at GE and you got a drink in your hand. Hey, I'm going to go here to work. Beer today. Right. So there were lots of things that we came up with that if you were going to be a professional band, what would this be and how would it be? And you guys have done some pretty sexy gigs. We've done a lot of stuff. Too. I mean, Kid Rock's been singing on stage with us, right? Uh, 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 Luke Bryan singing on stage with us. Uh, the lead singer from Styx on stage with us. Like We've played with a bunch of big artists that have that we've kind of been the backup band for, right? Which is really They come really fun. to town to do a show to do an and they event. know you guys are the biggest uh, thing. You're yeah. drawing a huge crowd. How many people generally show up at your summer shows? A lot. 
Thousands and thousands. Thousands, right. You know why, though? Because this band was uh, not about us doing what we wanted to do. So most cover bands, a lot of cover bands, will play the covers that they want to play. Hmm. We don't do that. <laughs> I hate to say that, but we don't. Like, we play the songs that you want. So if I see you at the grocery store and I want to tell you about my band or, or you're my aunt or uncle or anything, I would have said, especially on the, on the early years of the band, hey, what's your favorite song? Who's your favorite artist, right? Um, and then I, and I would, would say, play Radiohead. <laughs> right. And I would, <laughs> and would then be call like, you no on one the, else right, is no asking one else, right. We're going to have 5,000 people down at the river. Be. No one <laughs> wants to hear Radiohead but you, Leora. <laughs> no, that's not actually true, but... We do go for the masses, right? right? So we are going to, if you say, man, I really love this song, uh, then usually what we'll do is once we've heard it two or three times from somebody, we'll say, hey, let's work up this song. Yeah. And then I would call you on the phone or I would text you or I would email you or whatever I did and say, hey, Leora, by the way, we're playing your Radiohead song that you love so much at the River Stage. Come see us. And I'm going to come and bring five and of I, my friends. To you're going to bring all your friends yeah. because, oh, my gosh, Right. Your favorite song's going to be played, and you know that I'm going to say this one goes out to Leora. A couple other um, really awesome gigs that I know about, and I don't know everything that you mm -hmm. guys have done. You played, uh, you flew on somebody's private jet and played, I'm trying not to give it away, you tell who yeah. it was. No, no, no. We, we've been on a private jet, flown, played a date, which was, was amazing. A private party for, are we allowed to say that? For, was it for the Waltons or the, for... The owners of Walmart. Of Walmart, yes. Yeah. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. And so this is what yeah. I'm trying to draw out, right? Yeah, yeah. Is the, that, the big things yeah. have happened because of this band. Because Just because we, you're a cover band doesn't mean you're relegated to the oh, the, the dime bar. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. And to be honest with you, like, we've done a lot of events. Like, I, like I'm singing a song, a slow song, and there's 12 feet out in front of me. There's a guy and a girl, and we're playing this kind of private party, and we know there's lots of stars there, but I'm singing, and, and I'm singing, and I'm... I'm really in on this song, and, and I'm watching them dance. And as they turn around, it's Martina McBride and her husband, right? And she's staring right at me. And I have like, for a second, I'm thinking, how am I singing? <laughs> right? <laughs> am I doing okay? <laughs> I'm thinking, am I doing this right? But, uh, what was that? Was that at the that was No, that or? was for a Jerry Bruckheimer, who's a big movie producer he did all of the oh uh, yeah the pirates of pirates the, of the Caribbean, Caribbean. Uh, he's done all kinds of stuff so we we've played a bunch of big time like the Super Bowl party for NBC we've done a lot of great things and could we do more I, we haven't played for an inauguration of a president and I've always wanted to do that so I think eventually we'll go after that and so and, and why you know they could they obviously the money is there for them to hire anybody they want I have an idea about why they would want a cover band, but can you speak to that? Like, where, where's the opportunity for cover bands to understand, like, again, we don't just have to be playing in, in a bar where people want to hear, And there's, know, nothing, not, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? Bar, bar playing, like, we play only one bar. So, okay. in other words, we've that doesn't happen with us anymore. That's right. That's one way to take it, but that's yeah. not the only way. And It's it, not. And the point here is to say there are so many ways oh, to go Oh, there are. And so you just do it your own way. What you can find, some if there's somebody else that walked on the moon, you can probably f figure out how they got there, right? Right. And so, and whether you can or not is all up to you. It's all in your mind. It's all in your, you know, what you say I'll be able to do. And so... I think with with our band situation, it was looking at others and what they were doing. There was a band in Atlanta that was a cover band playing the same old bull crap that we play, and they were making thirty thousand dollars a night. You don't have to play that many gigs to make a lot of money right. doing that. Our band made over half a million dollars um, three years in a row, right? Until COVID this past Fantastic. year, which didn't do much for us, but I gotta be honest with you, I needed a break. That was twelve <laughs> years of my life, blessing, right? right? <laughs> and, and I really enjoy playing with these guys in my band. Same six guys since we started. You know why? Because we've always been going uphill. So, despite the fact that you don't get to play all your favorite songs and everything, everything yeah. that you want to do, there's still a lot of satisfaction in it for you. Is what totally. you're saying? Totally. I, I wouldn't even be. I don't really ever. If I had a little side project that played what I wanted, it would be original music anyway. Okay. You have to figure out who you are, right? If you want to make a living doing this, a good living, then build a really good product that everybody likes. Don't get a product that four people like. Right. You want 4,000 people to like it. Use right? the 4,000 people project to fund, right. to the, fund <laughs> the four people project. Which is, which is ultimately what you've ended up doing. Absolutely. And again, we're going to come back to that in just a second. 
But so now uh, there's so many things and we could spend the whole interview talking about how you guys built a business around that. And maybe that would be a separate interview, you know, but for now I'm going to move on to just, let's just talk about your journey through, you know, music from the beginning. What age did you start uh, playing music, being exposed to music? You have a musical family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a musical family. My dad was a drummer. I remember sitting at home, uh, cross-legged on the floor, sitting three feet from a TV that showed that had the Partridge family and the monkeys, right? Okay. Obviously dates me in the 70s <laughs> where I was watching these people do something I thought was fun, mm. right? And they were playing music together. And I just thought, wow, this is fantastic. You know, the, this is great. And so that made me want to do it. My I, The Mickey Mouse Club, sorry to say that, the, the later edition, those people up on, on stage singing, which ended up... But that was eventually, legit at the time, yeah. It, it eventually became the Britney Spears or the, the Justin, Justin Timberlake's Timberlake. of the world. I, I just had that desire. My dad was a drummer. Um, and so I had that desire. My brother started playing drums I kind of wanted to play drums, but I thought, well, there's two drummers in the family. That's enough. So I started playing guitar and, and eventually and how singing. how old were you then? You know, that I started to kind of move towards it more 12-ish. Okay. Right? By 14, I was pretty good. And 16, I was better. And 18, it was like every two years, I got better at what sure. I was doing. So I don't know what it was about that two-year span for me. But every two years, I felt like I was on a new plateau. And that's a good time for me to ask you then, because you know, a lot of times when we start, right? Like when I started playing piano and I was five, I was saying, I want to be a concert pianist. And I said that for a long time. But obviously, that's not what I ended up doing on my path. What you started out thinking you were going to do, right? Right. Uh, to be you, a rock star yeah, is what there. exactly what so I thought. Can you speak to be. the expectation changes of how uh, that evolved over time? I tell you this. This is the one thing that I tell a lot of people, and I, right or wrong, this is how I've lived it. Um, I expected a lot when I was young, right? I expected my life to work out exactly like I was planning it, right? And had all these things I was going to do. And it didn't go exactly like I thought it was going to by <laughs> any means. <laughs> but it went... It was good, right? So the idea is that That's people need to embrace the fact that, hey, I may want this to happen, and I can do all I can to stay in and go for that thing, right? But you also have to survive. So being working at a music store helped me survive. Being in a cover band helped me survive well, right? And again, now that gives me the money to do everything that I ever wanted to do because it takes money, right? It does, it, 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 to be free, remotely free. It in does. Life. And so right. you, that's my thing is that it was like, okay, if I wanted to go record a song in the studio, I never wanted to be an engineer. I never wanted to be a record producer. I just wanted to write the song or sing the song. Mm -hmm. Either one was fine with me. Lots of people come to me and I know that they have stars in their eyes that they want to be a star. They want to mm -hmm. be Rihanna. They want to be whomever it is that they look up to. I guess that's how it starts for all of us. I don't know. What I do know uh, is that they want that or they want to be rich. They want to have what they have. And it's a weird thing. And they think that through music they may be able to do that. I'm not saying you can't. I am saying that if you're a singer, you love to sing. So, so you're just singing because that's what you love to do, not it because it's what you want to be. Right. right. And so do that. And if you can find a way to make a dollar with it, and you don't have to work another job that you don't like, right? But maybe you don't. I have a really good friend that's actually in this room right now, right? And he's an amazing musician, songwriter, singer, right? Artist. Producer. Producer. Engineer. <laughs> you name Videographer. it. Yeah, yeah. He can do anything that he wants to do, and he's figured out a way to make money doing yeah. what he can do well, right? And do I have an opinion about him that he should be making more music and and filling this world up with more <laughs> songs? Be even next podcast. You're right, you're right. I think I do feel that way about him, but I can't put on to anybody what they ought to be. 
you influence um, a lot of people uh, because of the store, and you know you brought up our friend, our mutual friend, uh, who I know you've been an influence on him and on me. Who are some of the people that have influenced you? Uh, well, and specifically, really, what I'm after are um, resources for students. So it could be like. I love it. You know, the first time somebody told me about um, Tony Robbins, I was like, ah, Mm -hmm. Tony Robbins. You know, I love Tony Robbins. Um, But there's a lot of guys like that, you know, who are, you know, Jordan Peterson or Joe Rogan. Who are some of the people, and they could be famous or they could be local, uh, just a list of resources that you could rattle off that would be um, things that, oh, this is a great resource. Jack Canfield. Who are some of those people? I'm a a type A person that... um, I really enjoy uh, listening to podcasts, that's something I'm going to learn, or a person who's done something extraordinary yeah. and how they mind over mattered the situation they were in. Mm-hmm. So I'm well into, I just guess that I am a, on a learning path constantly, which is another thing I've always loved about you, is that you say, I want to be better at this, and the only way to do so, uh, besides putting in the reps, is to really kind of study something, right? Mm. If you want to be, um, if you want to lose weight, figure out how to do that by studying and understanding food and how it, you know, and exercise and everything else that goes into that. If you want to be great at walking a dog, I mean, whatever it be, somebody's <laughs> already put yeah. the information out there, right? Right? You want to be great at something? Find a life coach. Find a coach. Find somebody to walk with or be. Like, even just just like with the things that you've shown me as a vocalist in the in my life, has changed my life only because I didn't think I was right. I took it as though you were right, and I should probably just try whatever you said, right? So who are some of the uh, people that you've... You oh, know, I don't know. I mean, everybody you named. Names. I mean, I, I'm definitely... I don't know. I, I don't even know all of them. There I isn't just, a specific person. In there, there was there's been to. lots of them. Uh, I just, uh, like, I listen to a lot of books, and most of them are, are self-help, people would say, okay. where they push you in a direction to do something. Is so anything I'm, you're on to right now? Uh, I Actually, I just, okay, you want to talk about how crazy I am. I just signed up, so Audible, which is a book yeah. place, and I listened to all kinds of books last year, but some of them were 15, 22 hours of listening, right? Mm-hmm. Lots of time. Well, I just signed up for something called Blinkist, which is a book in 15 minutes. Okay. So I just signed up for this because I literally can drive somewhere, and in 15 minutes I'll get the idea of what this book all is. It's a Cliff Notes, audio-wise, and it's called Blinkist. And so that's kind of my thing I've been doing. And just anything that pops up that I think this may help me with my time management, with my thought process, yeah. with how much joy I have in my life. Because if you want something... You just have to pursue it. If you like the girl down the block, go find her and go after her. Well, first you listen to the Blinkist audio book in 15 minutes on how to get it. How to get the (laughs) right, right, right. And and so I do, I look for outside sources of information that I can take in on how I win at something, right? And I do like to win, but I also understand that winning... um, I don't expect myself to do anything more than what I can get up and do that day, right? Yeah. And I work towards something a little bit every day. So everything I'm involved with, whether it is the music store or whether it is the band or whether it is my songwriting, whatever it is I choose to do, especially in pushing music, I do a little bit every day of it, okay? Uh, as opposed to a whole lot of it here and then stop and then a whole lot of it there. That's a great point there. So I think I think it's about habit. That leads right into my next question for you, which was about practice and yes. how people practice. Because um, I there are different camps of the mm. way that people learn. Um, some people are just in it all the time and they don't have to be told to do it and it's just all consuming. And some people have to kind of be forced or prodded or have this regimen. Uh, for instance, Jay-Z said, you know, when he was slinging drugs early on and knew nothing about becoming a rap star, 
every spare moment that he had, all he wanted to do was write. Right. And so that was just naturally what he wanted to do. No one had to tell him to do it. Nor Jones, on the other hand, when she was learning to play piano, she was forced to by her mom. uh, And she only continued to do it because they had some kind of agreement where if she continued lessons until she graduated high school or something, her mom would buy her a car or pay for her college. There was some kind of deal that was compelling enough for her to continue on with the lessons. But as soon as she had, as soon as the deal was done, Mm -hmm. she quit. And she didn't play for some like number of years wow. again afterwards, which is a surprise, right? right? Because you would look at somebody like that and think, oh, she was probably always doing it from the age of three and loving it, but she didn't really love it. Can you talk about, you were already starting to foray into that. Yeah. What kind of practice, what did your practice look like? What was your process like? Because again, Jay-Z versus Nora Jones are two totally different ways of growing in that they both became great artists in their own rights. So they both... Regardless of whether or not you become a famous artist, right? There's a, a there are different paths through practicing. What was yours, or you know, growing? What is not mine? Just, still? Not just practicing I mean, skills, right? But you're talking about listening to books or like, yeah, what's yeah? Your, I just think that I think that this life is. Uh, I think you we're, we're you have two options here. You can let it do its thing, and you just follow life as it goes, or you try to hedge your way through something, mm. right? And so for me, I'll tell you this. There's a big, gigantic tree in the front <laughs> yard. And every day, if you pick up your axe and you can figure out the way, whether it's the, like, I was just listening to the five-second rule. Do you know about this? No. Literally, it's, I know I should go to the gym, and so, or it's, I need to get out of the bed, or I need to stop doing this, or whatever. And it's, it's, a, it's a way of understanding yourself and getting yourself to make the move, mm. right? So it's literally counting down, five, four, three, two, one, I'm going to the gym, right? I'm gonna go to the gym. I'm making this co- I'm, commitment. This is, this is it, and I'm down. gonna stop, yeah. and I'm gonna realize what I'm doing, and I'm gonna count that down real quick, and I'm gonna go, it's, then it's, it's about action. Um, I think people get in their head, and they dream a whole lot, and they, I think you have to, it's just a ton of action. So it's more of a forced pursuit for you. You than, have to sometimes. You have to force through it sometimes because you don't want to, okay. right? And I'm not saying that you can't take a breath and stuff, but it's, it's, like, um, it's like eating, right? You get up every day and you probably ought to eat something before the day's out, right? Now, can you fast for a few days? Sure, right? But, but honestly, if you eat the right food and you do a little bit every day, you'll survive a better life. My opinion. Sure. So I think that that's the same with whatever you're into. If you want to be a great singer, you, singer sing. People always ask me because I I can sing for three and a half hours, easy, straight, hard songs. People are like, man, how you do that? And I'm like, I've just done it so much that I don't know the difference, right? Mm. Like, like, you know, how long can you sing at your house? Can you sing an hour? Can you literally just sing yeah. song to song there to song? There was a buildup to, to that. There was. It's, a, it's it going to the like gym. Zero it's like, to three hey, hours. I picked up a thousand pounds. How did you do that? I don't know. I'm just strong. No. <laughs> it starts off that you pick up one pound and That's five right. pounds and 10 pounds and you how, keep moving up that scale. How did you apply this type of um, uh, process to getting into songwriting? It, you just got into this really like in the last five years I'll let you speak to that a little bit more yeah. clearly but this isn't songwriting as is a new more recent pursuit for you right when I was 16 when I was young and then uh, I think it was when I was 14 years old I started to write songs right okay. and I liked to write songs because I thought that's this is really neat and a good way to put out your emotions or whatever it be and I always wanted to be good at that and I don't know that I was really like there's people who make it by the age of 21 as songwriters and sure. they're incredible right Taylor Swift was one of them, where she got the right instruction very early and worked with a lot of great writers and became a great writer, right? So um, there's everybody's got their story in that. With me, I, start, I, I was working in the music store. I was playing in a cover band. I was working at different churches. I've done all kinds of things to survive. But then there was a point in the last, like when I turned 50, I think, right? I'm 54. And when I turned 50, I was like, kind of at that point, I went, wait a minute, what's something that I really wanted to do mm-hmm. that I never took the time to really do enough of? And so I've written a bunch of songs in my life. Um, and I still, I really enjoy that. I really enjoy that process. I don't know but that you I... Said that you set off on the goal when you were 50, and it, 
at least from my perspective, it was different than the way you had approached the goal at any other time in your no life. No doubt. Can you talk about that just a little bit? No doubt. And then also to the resistance that might have been there. You know, we're talking about you've got to count down from five. You've got to do the thing that you don't necessarily want to do. Just speak yeah, to that and how yeah. you applied that to songwriting. Well, okay, so with songwriting, of course, I uh, I joined a lot of different uh, groups on songwriting to get their perspectives of things, right? And since I like country songs, don't know why I've ended up there in my life. There's some kind of truth about it. A lot it. of people do. Yeah, I, I'm a truthful, uh, I like I like the truth and I also like the hopeful truth. And mm -hmm. I think that that's what country music sells well for the said. most part. Used to sell pickups, they still sell pickup trucks and, and, and drinking your beer and stuff like that, which is a lot of fun, by the way. Pickup trucks and yeah, I and have beer. one now and, and dogs and, and dogs and <laughs> I have all the above drinking beer. So, but with that, I I I think I just had a new plan. I was like, look, if I could start a music store and within three and a half years it be successful, right? And I knew what I had to do to make that happen. And if I start a band and within three and a half years it's successful, why can't I do that with the music thing, with the writing? That's what it got down to. It's like. Wow, I could do this. This and is a lot. And you had a specific plan for how to I, approach that. I did. I and like it, it because you're still in the middle of that journey. Oh, right I now, totally right? am. And the thing is, let me tell you this: you want to talk about wanting to quit something, mm -hmm. right? But I know that there's this big tree in the front yard mm -hmm. that has to come down eventually in my soul. What do you dedicate to working on that tree every day? I do. I wake up and I, I, I now, once I started learning a lot of things about songs and just how songs work and, and how, to, how to make great songs, and I think I'm just learning. It's just a lot I'm learning. And I put a lot of my songs in for submission to Nashville, right, to people who... Uh, like I have a friend who the other day was told no about something that they were doing their music mm -hmm. and it crushed them. And I turned to them and said, do you realize how many times I've heard the word no? <laughs> right. Only takes one yes. In four years. Right. Yeah, right? Yes. Oh, a and you're still doing it. Knows. You're still oh, yeah. writing the songs. How yeah. many songs have you written over that four year period? Oh. Not ca don't count the ones that you wrote, you know, earlier. Oh, I don't know. I, I guess, um, maybe. Just a few hundred, probably. There, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, just a few hundred. Yeah. But here's <laughs> what you got to realize is that a guy like Chris Stapleton, who, um, you know, he, he had over a thousand songs cataloged before anything happened. Absolutely. And that's a different kind of path, right? Because that's all he was doing. And you've done a ton of different stuff. I have. I've, it's significant to say a few hundred over four years because I even have students, you know, just met somebody out in LA the other day, a student online who said, you know what? Yeah. And I've got these four songs. And I was like, when did you write these four songs? He was like, well, in 2017. And I was like, okay, yeah. it's 2000, it's 2021 right now. Right. So, right. You're how many? You know how much time a week, on average, over the last four years, have you dedicated to practicing songwriting? And that would include sitting down in Nashville with people, getting critiqued, yeah. writing the songs. How many hours? Every a week? morning, like every morning. Okay. Kind of thing. Hour, two hours. Two hours probably, and so yeah, I would think that that's probably, um, and even more through COVID, uh, because I could, didn't have any gigs. Yeah. So it was. Um, it was either that or drink, right? <laughs> so Which I don't know that you can print this, but I can tell you this right now. During COVID, I drank more than I had in the last 10 years combined kind of thing. And so, I was pregnant, so I, yeah, you, you, I you escaped were, thank that Thank God demise. you were pregnant through this situation. <laughs> no, but, but with that, um, you know, I would wake up every morning. It's my routine. You know, yeah. I'd, I'd wake up and have my coffee and start thinking about songs and writing some lyrics or reading something. So, you know, I read a lot about, you know, who, what makes great songs. And, and you want to do that, uh, but it also, you're saying it takes a, a flex of willpower as well. Oh, my gosh. I can't, like, it's just not like something. It's not like eating sweets that, that I love to oh, do, so right? Easy to I, do. That's all right? It's so easy to do. <laughs> Break up in the yeah, It wouldn't matter what day it was if there were, you know, if there were, you know, <laughs> hostess anything on this table, <laughs> I would be all over it every so, day, right? So that's not the, so that's the work not what of you songwriting. Do. You don't walk up to the whole meal <laughs> that you want. Thank you for wanted. putting it like yeah. that. That's fantastic. You, you, that's you, you walk up to it and go, okay, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to I'm gonna kind of focus on what it is. You know, and in Nashville, it's a very different 
writing thing, they literally get up and they go to write and they write from 10 to two and take a lunch and come back and do more writing, right? Yeah. So they'll write six or more hours every day and they just do it every day. And they can only help to get better because they're working with different people and they're always watching what this guy's doing and they're, they're either learning or they're not. So yeah. it's just, it's, I have to say this, by doing it every day, you're building a tool belt, right? It, it is, yeah. Expands. And i got to be honest with you. If I moved to Nashville, and that's the one thing I would say about everything I've ever done, I would tell anybody who wants to be a songwriter, move. Mm. Move yeah. to where they do it. If you yeah. want to be in the hip-hop scene, move to Atlanta, mm -hmm. right? If you, it, now, I'm not saying you can't, you can, that you, it can't happen to you in your home place, but realize the chances of you being able to be a great writer in Nashville is so much easier if you're there every day, right? That's right. And, and that, if that's even what you want, I think the first thing is to try to figure out who you are and then what do you really want, yeah. right? And, uh, and I think that that's something that's really hard that you always look at in your life is what do I want? Right? What do I really want, and how do I get there? It's hard to it answer is. that because you it spend is. a lot of time being told. You are. What you're being to told, do. or you have this dream in your head, and you can't get past that dream because you've always had it, and you're stubborn, or whatever it be. And stubborn is good. Don't get me wrong, but you, you do have to sit back and go, okay, who am I, and what do I need, and what do I want to do? And you know, I've had friends walk away from things that I thought they shouldn't. Right. But they're doing great. And that's a good segue into the conversation about plan B, right? Uh, what do I want, right? And then there's this whole concept of plan B. And, and I, I haven't settled on even if there's a, a black and white answer to this. Probably there isn't because as I get older, I discover there's no black and white answer to anything. What are your thoughts on having a plan B, mm -hmm. right, um, when you realize this isn't what I want, or I can't have what I want, um, speak to plan B. Some, some people who have made a really successful career for themselves said, this was my only option. I had no plan B. And some people, uh, like Caitlin Smith, I went on a tour with her, and she said, yeah, you know, writing the songs, I wanted to be the artist. Um, and she's a fantastic artist in her own right, but writing the songs was kind of her plan B. Well, now that's what is yeah, has become her. the thing. Sure. So her plan B was kind of based in music even still. I've seen people work that plan B out a lot of different ways. Sometimes parents will explain plan B to students or you know, to their kids as like, you have to, um, well, if you're not going to be a famous guitar player, Johnny, then you're going to be a dentist. You know, and they're like, right. oh, I don't want to be a dentist. You know, I don't want to be an accountant. Talk my about plan, my B. plan B was always in the music industry it, it, because I, this is what I do. I mean, I'm just telling you, it's, it's kind of just runs in my blood, and I couldn't imagine me doing anything else. I really can't. Um, I, I don't know what it is. I couldn't imagine not being part of watching music or being part of music, even if it's a student that you're watching and you're very proud of them, that you've coached throughout the years, or just somebody you motivated a little bit. That's me. Like I, I look on that as I'm always in this field. Of music, right? And and not only that, I really enjoy all aspects of this thing, right? So us sitting here having a conversation about music is a great thing. Like this is easy for me to do. I love music and everything that goes along with it. So whether, yeah, that's a very interesting thing. I, I think my plan B was always to do music. Okay. So there was the plan so A. Kind of no plan B. <laughs> that's right. So it's like, hold on. I know that all of my plans are in the music world because it's what makes me really happy. Sure. And so if I wanted to be an actor and go do that too, then that could be a great plan B. I mean, it's the Johnny Depp story. He wanted to be a musician, still does, dying to be a musician. What's he get? His plan B is I'll go act in some stuff. He goes and does it. He get, becomes more famous as an actor as he does a musician, right? Mm -hmm. But what is he doing now? Still playing music. Plays in a band called the Vampires or the something Vampires. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, band. Uh, yeah. it's like Joe Perry from Aerosmith and and oh, and <laughs> all these famous people. You know, Alice Cooper sings in it. Nice. All these famous people are in this uh, uh, this band that he has now. But so I don't know. I think. Did you go to college? No, I wanted to. I should have. Uh, really? Yeah. Do you, do you really say that? I do. Head? I tell you this. If I had the chance to go to college and study what I took me 10 years to learn, yes. If I could have learned it in a year, if what took me 10 years. Music related, in other words. Yeah. Well, not only that, business. 
Okay. So understanding that this is the music business and you either handle the reason our band did so well is because we were more about the business and less about not that that we took away from our way we rehearsed or did anything else uh, as a band does but most people just spend all their effort on being a band right singing and playing the song they're not realizing that they have to book all the shows and and that they have to do all this whole business side over here you have here. to make money if you if you want they to continue do. doing it for, yeah, it's more than a hobby so right? the idea is that how do you how do you realize that um that this thing is, some people are so crazy talented and great at what they do, like an Amy Winehouse, right? Who's incredibly like, oh my gosh, amazing, but just a mess of a human, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so we see where that leads, right? Um, I mean, I'm not, like I love Amy Winehouse. I thought she was incredible and dark and right crazy and good there's a price there's a that. price to, for that whole thing but i i think that most of the people that i've seen that are successful people really were successful because their business strategies were as good as their talent and matter of fact in a lot of the people that i've met who are big gigantic stars they weren't very good at being a musician i just heard this uh quote from roosevelt uh, just yesterday and it was speaking to that very thing uh that you know he said some men like are just you know, naturally born great leaders, but most of us have had to work and learn and study and fail. And, you yeah. know, we weren't, we weren't, um, we didn't come out like this. We were made, we made ourselves. Into Absolutely. This. Yeah. And, that's and I think I that, that I think that that happens. Um, maybe one out of a hundred people that I see maybe have that great talent. But the problem is, and though not usually, 99% of the time, they're not the people that make it. The mm -hmm. people that make it, and I mean make it in the fact that they do what they want to do for their life and they get paid to do so, those people worked hard and had a plan and kept building this thing to where all of a sudden they're standing on top of the world. Yeah. It wasn't because they were great, because I've met so many stars who just aren't very good at what they sure. do, but they did it. They got the dream out of it, or they got to do what, exactly what they wanted to do. And so. I, I love that, that that goes right into the next conversation because you may not be great, and a lot of people really aren't truly as great as we, from the viewer's perspective, perceive them to be. I've worked, I remember standing backstage at uh, the Women of Nashville show. So all these great songwriters in Nashville coming together and I'm backstage and I'm talking to a drummer. I, I'm not going to call her name. Outstanding drummer. And she tells me, uh, yeah, I do know, but I just feel like such an imposter uh, because I can't, you know, um, she was like, I can't play like these guys in the church. You know, they just, she's coming out of the church where they're just like drumming like they're crazy. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> um, she didn't feel legit. She was very much legit. I heard the same thing from a bass player who tours worldwide with a huge artist. Again, I'm not going to name the name, but she told me, yeah, you know, I can't stand up. Somebody asked me to take a bass solo. Right. I can't stand up. I'm not Victor Wooten, you know, I'm not going to be like... Right. <laughs> and, they're, and I've heard this from many people about the, the feeling that they have imposter syndrome. You know, like, I'm not really that good at what I do. I mean, of course, part of them recognizes that in order to stand in front of 30,000 people in an arena, the space mm -hmm. player I'm talking to, she knows she has to have something going on. Sure. But still, a part of her is saying, I don't feel good enough. Have you had that experience? Um, Every day of my life. There. And can you just, is there anything you can say about that? I think it's really valuable. I, I don't know that I don't walk on stage that. beforehand. I feel like an imposter a lot too. That's There's something to this in our lives. And I mean, what I'm saying by this is that I'm pretty good at some things, right? Pretty good at them. And I still have my doubts about everything. I mean, everybody does. You always fight against yourself constantly. But if you can kind of put that back and, and let that be 1% or 2 or 3 or 5% of who you are, it also grounds you really well. Mm -hmm. So I like, the, nice. I like the fact, like I've met a lot of people who I think I wouldn't give you a dollar for who they are as humans because they were so full of who they were mm -hmm. and, and how, how they were. And that just made me not want to be around them at all. I just love the people who love to do what they did, right? 
and knew that there was a learning curve of how to be great at it. But yeah, some of the best people I've seen still think they have tons to learn. And that's that's the inspiring thing of looking at finding somebody who you think, man, this guy's always been like one of my favorite guitar players ever. Six, we perceive they're them so, as successful. They're gigantically like successful. They're a huge right. star, but yeah, somewhere inside. They yeah. don't see it like we see it, right? And I think I don't see me like other people see me. I'm sure that you're the same way. I think all of us, there's a perception, good or bad, that they that they see about you. And life is... You know, for others, it's perception. If I worry about what other people think about me, I'm probably going to be in some trouble, right? So I'm just trying to be what I think is the right me mm-hmm. and, um, and to pursue it a little bit every day, right? Because if you do a push-up today and two push-ups tomorrow and 10 next month and 20 the next month and at the end of the year... I'll guarantee that your chest and your arms will be different. And you, then you don't need anyone to tell you you're strong. You're exactly right. Because <laughs> you've done it yourself. Yeah, you yes. started from this point and you got to this point. I think that's hugely important that people don't realize that it's a little bit of everything. It's every day. It's, mm-hmm. you, you, know, you can go on a fad uh, diet and lose weight. Absolutely no doubt about it. But really, what were you doing to get you in the position you were in the first place, right? And so how does life become more consistent to where you're putting in your time, your reps, every day, everybody talks about putting in your reps, that's it. That's how anybody gets anything in their life. And then, you know, focusing, having a vision, where you wanna go. And so if you don't know where you're gonna go, you're gonna get lost along the path. But if I said, hey, I wanna go from here, and I wanna go to downtown 2nd Avenue in Nashville, I know it's probably the quickest way to get there, right? Because I, I know where my destination is. I think a lot of people don't have a clue of where they want to kind of be and what they want to do. And you're saying this helps offset the feeling of that imposter syndrome then. You know where you want to go. Yeah, you're yeah, doing yeah, the push-ups sure. every day. Absolutely. And you know it. But I still walk up on stage if I'm singing and... Oh, butterflies like crazy before I walk out on stage. No doubt I can't walk out there. And yeah, maybe we're playing for a private group of 100, but maybe we're playing in front of 10,000 people, mm-hmm. right? And you doesn't matter for me. Either way, I'm like, I want to go and be great at this. Those crazy nights I do remember in my youth I do remember Pomerati said, you know, it, it took him seven years. It was amazing to me that he was so specific and he knew that it took him seven years to develop his belt mix on his highest note. He was famous for singing like a C5 and he sure. belt on it. Yes, 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 yes. Um, he said it took him seven years to develop that belt mix, which was one thing I found amazing, just to convey it, that to myself. Yeah, seven yeah, yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. He hey, said listen, he, you call me back in seven years, right? <laughs> he said, it's not that he couldn't sing that whole time, but that you know that he knew that, that he was working. Towards that towards little, le, this yeah. thing that, listen, Rome wasn't built in a day. And if indeed you have some kind of vision set out in front of you that you can push towards, right, that that one, maybe you don't even think you really can do, but you're willing to go after it because, and you're willing to really look for it, I think you can find whatever you want. But go back and to And endure this. the failures, right? No, so which do, is where we were. Because let me tell you this, right now in my life, I am so down on my, I am down on my songwriting, right? Now let me tell you this, I know me. So I am internally right now preparing myself to launch again, right? Mm-hmm. But I had to step back and go, what am I doing that's right? right? What could I do better, right? And what's something else I can learn to take me another step further? So sometimes you do have to, like, if you're on a, if you're marching towards something, you know, and you're going towards it, you do have to stop sometimes and take a look around and make sure you're, you're not going in the wrong direction. Right. Oh, wait. Right. And, <laughs> I missed my and, turn. <laughs> right. And so all of a sudden, I think the one word this past year for me is to be aware Right, and I think that being aware of uh, everything, every moment, you know, enjoying that moment, being aware of what's happening, and not 
everything living towards the future. That's been one of my issues as I've always been a guy who, like my friend lives in the past, right? My good friend, like he's always about the eighties, right? And I'm always about the future. What is tomorrow? What's going to be the next day? I've learned to live a little bit more in the now. Here and now. Right, in the now. And so that's a huge deal for me. Um, but, but just being aware, you know, who you are and what you're doing and what's working and what's not working. And so I had to step back, just literally made a decision two weeks ago that I would take a little bit of time to review and then to uh, see where I wanted to really, again, you know what they say, I, I, I read this recently in a, one of the books I was reading. It was in a, the, one of the habit books. Like okay, yeah, like big, Seven Habits. Yeah, yeah how something. Successful whatever. People. Yeah. No, it was the other one where make it, it truly it was like a... Anyway, He's bottom line is, <laughs> if you started in Los Angeles and you took the nose of the plane and you moved it, you know, like, you know, so far off, like six inches or yeah. something, and you flew in that same direction... And you were heading towards Washington D.C., you would end up in New York, or or vice versa. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. That that you uh, constantly have to adjust along the path to get wherever you're going to go. Just being aware of you what's going on. You can't just lock down. You on can't. The you parameter. can't just lock down on this parameter and go there because it just. I don't know that it works because I think that's really hard on you as a human. I sure. think it is. So. Can you tell a story about a time? Uh, if you're willing to share something embarrassing or a failure, uh, th- so many artists go through this, and then, like you said, th- th- then they just quit. You know, but you have to be willing to like accept that these things happen and readjust. Big time failure, big embarrassment. Uh, uh, just forgetting the words on stage, something that's uh, happened to you that uh, you can tell. Uh, if you're as a performer, yeah. Oh, right. definitely. Uh, singing. Uh, I have messed up so many times. I, I can't tell you as a performer. Uh, it would be, of course, forgetting a song. One time, I there was a it was I was singing and it, I was singing the right words to another song in the song. Okay, you don't get much worse than that, right? I have literally fallen down in front of lots of people, like literally fall, fallen down. fallen down. Yeah, I one time went across it when you had when you had mic cables. I did this big. I'm going to be a rock star spin. And as I did, the mic cable wrapped around my ankles, and I ended up literally it got bound to where I was like this, teetering, and I fell, right? And look, this is life. You're never going to just, it's just, it's so embarrassing sometimes. And I think I just got used to that embarrassment because I did that to myself a lot, right? <laughs> and, and it was usually because I wasn't prepared enough. Um, mm, well and some, sometimes there were accidents, but most of the time it was just my preparedness. You know, it was uh, it was. It's like you know, if you don't study for the test, more than likely you're going to like, walk in and take the test, and you're not going to do well on it, mm-hmm. right? And that's with anything. So if you're going to play an event or do something, it's just how much time did I put in towards this? How confident am I? Any Olympic athlete who wakes up in the morning and does that same thing for eight hours a day, right? Swimming, whatever it be. Mm. They sick and tired of it? Heck yeah. Is there something that drives them on the inside to get where they're going? Sure. Is it healthy? Yeah. It's all you to deal with. You know what I'm saying? You've sure. got to figure yourself out. But So then advice? I mean, tons, tons of embarrassing situations. In business, I've had lots of embarrassing things happen to me that I've done that I just... It's, I don't even want to describe some of them. Um, but <laughs> but it it's is, so helpful when you do. It is. Well, and here's the thing. Because it shows people, well, right? Because look at, look at all that you've accomplished in spite of that, right? And people tend to fail, and then they think, you know, oh, this yeah. says everything bad about themselves, and this isn't the path I was meant for. Yeah. I can, I can go down that path of telling you all the things I've, I mean, there's been a lot of things that I've just really screwed up. Um. And, and then there's been moments where I said, I don't want to do this anymore. And then you step back and you take that little breath and you go, is this, you know, you reevaluate. And, and I guess that's why a lot of people don't, like I find actors that I thought were great actors and then they don't act anymore. I think, why aren't they acting anymore? Because they didn't want to, mm. I guess, right? Why aren't you singing anymore? Or why wouldn't you do this? I, it's hard to figure out anybody else. I can't figure out me, right? So I, I, me trying to analyze everybody else in this world, I've, I've really, for the most part, stopped doing. I do listen to a lot of podcasts, a lot of information going in so that I'll understand how a person got to that point. You know, When you find somebody who 
didn't really have anything to look forward to. And then all of a sudden they made it and they did something great in their life. And again, something great can just be learning how to play a song. Mm. It doesn't have to be that you're a famous musician or that you get paid a whole lot of money doing so. But I do think there's smarter ways of going about it, right? Um, smarter ways of learning. And there's quicker paths to that. Uh, I think there's 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 better ways of doing what it is in your You can be in a Porsche or you can be on a bicycle and head across the country. You certainly right? can. <laughs> um, advice that you would have given to your younger self if you knew what you know now. Ugh. Uh, don't be a jerk because I was a jerk in many different situations in my life and I've become less of one. It's just because I, I expected everybody else around me to... Uh, 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 do exactly what I was doing, you know, or be, I, my bar was very high for me, so I made it high for everybody else. And when I realized that you can't really do that, that was, I was kind of a jerk to people young, I think, mm. that I'm not now, that I would find myself understanding that my journey is not your journey and that if you want to do this certain way, that's fantastic. If you come to me and seek counsel, I'll tell you what I think. Always, right? That's a revelation. Yeah. You're saying. I, I think it was for me. But I think I'd go back and say, hey, Mark Maxwell, uh, do, do these push-ups now. Don't wait 20 years to do them, right? Don't start. Like, if you want this, make it a part of your daily habit, you know, that you wake up, you put on your shoes, and you walk out the door, and you take a run. If that's what you... Yeah. You know, and I think that's what I would say to me is that, you know, learn to be better at your instrument and lots of things that I think that I am less at. I'm a really good entertainer. I do know that about me, and I can sing pretty good and play pretty good, right? Yes, you can. Well, thanks. <laughs> but I'm saying I can, and I realize that. It took me a long time to become that. Hmm. There's lots of things I wish I could have fast-tracked a little bit better when I was younger. Because it took me 20 years to learn what some people can learn in two years. Sure. That's the reason I said that college, I thought, I would tell most people don't go to college. It's a waste of your time and your money. I totally 100% believe that. And specifically, if you want to be a doctor, something that you have to have that degree mm -hmm. for, go do it. But for me, I would have liked to have gone to take, I would have, I would have taken some really intense business classes when I was young to understand how business works. And I wish that I would have taken Dell. I think now with the internet, it's so easy to understand music and learn music and take theory classes and things like that. But when I was young, it wasn't that. And I wish I would have listened more in my English class, right? Mm. To be a better songwriter and mm. storyteller. I wish I would have learned more younger instead of waiting so long to learn it. Mm. You get what I'm saying? I do, yeah. It makes me think wisdom from... Uh... <laughs> from the most unusual place came to me recently. Uh, I was, I have gone back and forth lamenting being pregnant at 44 and what I gave up by not being a mother sooner, uh, I would have had, you know, potentially another an extra 10 years with my child or whatever. And it got me thinking about this, listening to David Le and, uh, Letterman. Mm -hmm. He's got, you know, a new talk show and he, and m several times now I've heard him say, uh, boy, you know, here I just was busied myself with the, unimportant task of this little show that I was doing. Right, right. <laughs> he was very sincerely dismissive of the show and all of his success to say, why did I wait until I was 55 to become a father? I missed the whole point of what, you know, this thing that was so important. And I'm drawing the line back to you maybe just to share this because I said the same thing about, you know, ooh, maybe I should have done this a little sooner. And I said this to a person who was here installing carpet mm -hmm. the other day. And he said, hey, but you know, if you had done that earlier, you wouldn't be the person that you are now doing it. And you might not have had, you know, think of all the freedom and the liberty and the things that you're bringing to the pursuit now that you wouldn't have had if you had chosen to do this when you're 27 or 30. And I thought... You just installed my carpet. <laughs> yeah, right. The carpet dude is the <laughs> smartest guy on the planet. But you know, you could look at it that way too. It's, but it's still great advice. Like it's, it's a there's a, a fine balance there, isn't there? Right. Oh, there is. Like I should have done more and and focused on this sooner. But then what would I have missed or sacrificed? Or what can I bring to this now that 
I had no chance of, of doing so. Oh, then. no doubt about that. And I think, you know, even I think you were the one who inspired me years ago to take a look at people who had done great things in their 50s and in mm. their 60s and in their 70s and in their 80s. And, and so for me, being an older guy, you know, at 54, that I still have a lot of life in me uh, and want to pursue. And what can you do in the next 40 years? Right, exactly right. That's what I'm looking <laughs> right. at is what can I do for the next 40 years of my yeah. life? And, and, and so I think that's kind of my whole attitude on, on life in general. Uh, I think you know that. It's probably the reason you asked me to sit down is because I do have that kind of can do, we can do this attitude kind of thing. And I... I really want to see it for other people too, and the the, the hell they put themselves through to mm. get there, right? Uh, common mistakes you see people making, then sure. Oh, do, what common mistakes? Yeah, you see the hell. I mean, it's I, just such I a perfect think segue. I, I think people dream too much and they don't do. This is it. I don't know what to tell you. It's about action. It is the only thing that changes anything in life. Mm -hmm. It is an action. I am going to forgive somebody. I'm going to love somebody. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to walk out the door right now. I'm going to sit down at my piano. It is all action. I don't know what to say to you. You can't do much more if you don't act upon something. And so that's the only thing that I know has worked for me more than the next guy. And people go, oh, yeah, but you, you know, you're, you're Mark Maxwell. And I go, no, it's not that I'm Mark Maxwell. I can do just. And I, can, I wasn't I can, born with a superpower. As, exactly. <laughs> I will fail at this just as many times as anybody will. It's just I won't give up. Yeah. That big tree in the front yard that I feel needs to be chopped down, I will chop it down to the last day. So, I will. I just know it. And I know that about me. And it, what's that entail? Well, now that I'm this aware. I want to enjoy this day today. Mm. I do. I want to enjoy every bit of this day, and I don't want to dream it off into the future, and I certainly don't want to live in the past. So the now is very important to me, understanding that if I do brush my teeth today a couple of times or so, right, <laughs> that I probably won't have cavities tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? And if I will go down and do my push-ups today, I'll probably have and feel stronger and be stronger in my older age. If I sit down and sing a song or learn to play something new or challenge myself in some way and, and get over that hurdle, I have done something great for me. I don't know how else to get anybody else to do it, but it all comes down to one thing, and that is an action. So either you are acting on something right now or you're not. That's how I've gotten where I've gotten. So your goals now and taking what are you taking action towards? What's My your... goals now are to take less time working at the music store, which I enjoy doing, mm -hmm. but I've got a very specific plan for that. Uh, My band. Man, it's been very good financially for me to be in this band. I've enjoyed the ride. It's also made me very strong because I've had to do it so much. So How I'm many years have? Has Twelve years been? together, okay. thirteen coming up, I guess. So it's been great. Um, do I think I'm going to go back to it? Probably because it's a good living and I really do enjoy it. I don't know at what pace. All right, this uh, I don't know that yet. I, I I enjoy it as long as I have a good balance of other things in my life. My family first, mm -hmm. right? That's very important to me right now, especially at this age. And you're right, some of the things I've missed out because I wasn't checked into that situation, hugely, you know. But you learn that, mm -hmm. right, about yourself. But you also have to look at other people and think to yourself, I may not be right, maybe that guy's right, right? That's one thing I'm pretty good about. If you said to me, hey, you know, if you eat a bunch of these candles, you're gonna survive life better. I'm probably gonna say you're crazy. But if you said, here are these fruits and vegetables. But if I said, I'm 94. Yes, and I've eaten a lot of those. <laughs> Give me some of that candle. Maybe. Yeah, let me see. Where's that candle? Let me get it there right now. But there's some people that are just crazy about things like that, where I go, if it sounds like it's a pretty good idea, I'm probably going to try it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay down my own pride or my own thoughts to go, look, this guy did this. It really worked for him. Maybe it can for me. And it doesn't seem like it's that crazy, right? It just seems like it's hard work. That's the problem yeah. we have. Goals around songwriting? Last time I checked in with you, you had some really specific goals. I do. I am very specific on where I'm going. I am stepping back. So right now is a, is a uh, 
I have to get to Nashville. I, this whole year of COVID really blew me out. And I'm just going to be honest with you. The only reason it did is that I couldn't really go down and meet people and hang out with yeah. them very much. So uh, whether it was Skype or whether you're, you know, you're FaceTiming people, stuff like that, you can still do some stuff. But really where I want to get takes me to be in rooms that I was, that they probably allowed less people in this year than ever before. Sure. That will change again. I just want to be a great songwriter. I don't care. I, I watched this thing about Emily Dickinson the other day. Mm-hmm. And that no one really knew how great she was until she was gone, right? And but along the path, she wrote a bunch of stuff, and uh, and you know, got that out of her soul, right? And whether she was happy through it, that's I don't know. <laughs> I know that I'm pretty happy right now. I have a lot of joy that I wake up daily and go, "Hey, I made it. Here I go." I know. Like this, if nothing else happens for me, this, this doesn't suck. Yes. I mean, seriously, <laughs> so I, I think it's true. I, I think it's true. And there are other days yeah. that aren't great. Sure. But overall, I'm very, I feel very blessed to be where I am. And most of the things were my decision, mm-hmm. right? Uh, choices in life. And so you choose your path. Other interests on your path? A lot of artists are multifaceted. They do, you know, I'm a runner, which is something completely, uh, it's very related in my mind to music, but right. in most people's minds, completely unrelated. Are there other things that you no. do? You're just all I, I just, all I, don't, I don't think I have that. I love movies, right? And so uh, if I had uh, an extra two hours, I would watch a movie that's ma- well made. And I will stand back and watch the art and love every moment yeah. of it. Because I do. I find it fascinating. And I love to dream. So I allow that to be my dream time kind of thing. Sure. Right? Most of the time I'm in just full action. Where am I going now? What's going to be the next thing that I have to somewhat cross off the list? Or what am I going to do today that's going to be better for tomorrow? Right? Yeah. Um, but living in the now, I'm sorry to say, is very important to me right this very second. So... I want to really enjoy the fact that I have friends, right? I'm right here in this lovely place, right? Talking about something I like so much. Yeah. So I, I think, I don't know. And again, do I want to chop down some big trees still? Yes. You know, are, do I know what they are exactly? No, I don't. Um, I found out this past year that I really enjoyed not working. I really did. I spent more time in my pool than I have in all of my life. Also with drink in hand. Because we have taken <laughs> yes, sorry many years, though, right, of just grinding. I, gr- I did so much that I think this past year I learned something it's by. Like, oh. There's a balance. There is a balance in life. But I find out that most people are bounced the wrong way. I heard it said yesterday again. The um, you know, in order for someone to come to kind of the end of their life or grow into their old age and feel contentment and mm-hmm. satisfaction, they had to have this perfect balance uh, between uh, love, play, and work, and that those three things, you know, if they were all in balance, and you you come to the end and you. You you don't have all this regret or I urgency. do I, all eggs in one basket is a bad deal. And so yeah, and so you know that's kind of I think COVID in that regard has been a little bit of a blessing for you and I and for a lot me, of people. Oh, are saying it made that, me stop. Like, oh, I uh, this is play. Right. I take time to play. I take time to love. Right. 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 Those two things definitely came out this past year. I think you're right. It, I love. I got. I, I know. I hate this for our country and everything and the. Of course. The, the friends I've lost through this. Uh, as It's been a, a, an experience for me that I couldn't have done without it, right? I couldn't have realized how important certain things are in my life mm-hmm. without it. And I, and I, not that I enjoyed it in lots of ways, but I, I was taught a big lesson in the last year of my life that I'm, I'm excited to go forward uh, with balance more. Mm. I think that's a big word right now. I balance. Guess. balance. Yeah. really is. Because I, forever it was just me chopping down a tree. And what I didn't realize, I was using the wrong end of the axe. Or the sun was shining. And right. And I never day. took the moment to just go, <laughs> wow, this is a killer day. I would enjoy this moment. I get to be right. out here chopping right. this tree and that's it's a right. gorgeous day. Right. Mark Maxwell, that's a great... Um, 
That's a great way to summarize, you know, everything that we've talked about today. Thank you so much for being here. In I think this is awesome. Today. It's been fun. I'm excited for you in the future of doing this. This is really great. Thanks a lot. Yeah. I can't. And, you know, <laughs> ne really appreciate it. Next time it. I see you, I'm sure there will be a baby on hand. So There will be a little Wolfgang, and he'll be grilling you with questions I, as well. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, so I know he will. <laughs> Why is the sky blue? <laughs> All right. Hey. <laughs> Well, I'll do my best to answer. Yeah. Thanks again, Mark. I appreciate your time. Thank you.